What's up everyone, RJCMTB here, and today we're checking out the brand new Pivot Shadow Cat. Uh, we've been riding it for the week. Make sure you subscribe, hit the thumbs up, and let's check it out. So, what exactly is the Shadow Cat? I'm sure you're aware if you've found your way to my video that it's a 27.5 bike with 160, 140 travel. And you're thinking, well, that's interesting, everything's 29 now, but um, you know, 27.5 was the prominent wheel size up until a couple of years ago. Um, and you gotta ask yourself, well, who's this bike for? And um, personally, I think this bike is ideal for, you know, smaller riders, medium to smaller size riders um, that find you know the 29 wheel uh, potentially clunky and quite oversized in tight terrain so um, you know there's a definitely a market there for this medium sized wheel so I jumped at the chance of uh, riding this bike for the week after shooting the flyby uh, video uh, I just couldn't not ride the bike so I hit up the guys there and said do you mind if I film a like a first look style video similar to what I did for the Trail 429 which was really well received uh, so uh, Patrick said yeah why not um, so I've had the bike for a couple of weeks I've been super busy so I haven't got a ton of riding in on it but the last three days I've uh, put it through its paces uh, everything from XC stuff uh, riding home from work on Friday uh, to some, some trail style riding on Saturday. And then on Sunday for the third day, uh, I had to put a big wheel on the front. So um, I knew that I couldn't put this video out and not run a mullet setup. Um, so that's what I see on every time a bike comes out with 27 inch wheels, people are like, but can it mullet? Can we put a 29 inch wheel on the front? Um, so you, you bet I, uh, I uh, pulled the fork off my switchblade, threw it on the front of the bike, bit of uh, business up the front, party at the back, um, and railed some, some steep stuff on Eliminator, which is completely blown out, shaley, horrendous at the moment. It's as bad as I've ever ridden it or seen it. So um, yeah, we gave the bike a good test from uh, everything flat, XC to like, horrendous downhill hold on for dear life so uh, we gave the bike a good test let's kick things off and see uh, how she rides Ooh, I'm a little bit out of shape made our way up to the top of Bercera trail one of my favorites and one that I've probably ridden on every single bike that I've got my hands on so I have a really good feel for what the trails like uh, in different conditions and on different bikes so we're going to run the uh, old Shadow Cat down Becerra West Side. See how it feels. Thank you. So Pivot never really gives me um, a full rundown of the specs, the geometry and everything on the bikes. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to dive down into that really technical side of it. Uh, I'm not an expert in geometry and things like that. I'm the guy that tends to just jump on a bike, just rip it down the hill and then decide how it feels for me personally. Um, so that's the type of information that I want to get across in this video is how does it really ride, not what you know all the details are on paper being a dw link bike you know it's just going to pedal fantastic no bob um, and just accelerates 
uh, all the power down to the back wheel and it just climbs like every other pivot that you know it just doesn't squat down um, and it's really efficient <laughs> Playful bike. Ah, corner. first descent in bikes bike feels amazing I feel right at home I don't know it's it's very precise and agile this bike and it's because of the smaller wheels for sure and I'm not saying 27.5 is the wheel size that's the best everyone's moved to 29 obviously uh, I'm saying 27.5 is not dead that's for sure uh, this thing rips downhills, climbs great. Um, you know, I don't notice a huge d difference in the wheel size. It's just, you know, the the small caveats or um, the small difference in the larger wheel size versus the smaller wheel size is just 29. It will hold speed over over some rough terrain um, and potentially not get stuck in holes and things like that. Whereas the 27.5 is a little more agile. Um, corners better in my opinion, and definitely feels better when you get off the ground. Um, and for a smaller rider, um, you know, th there's some advantages there in the smaller wheel size. So the Shadow Cat comes in two colors, Danger Fruit, which is kind of a magenta color, I would say. And the one that I was riding is kind of like a blue gray uh, similar to the new shuttle that's just come out um, I'm not entirely sure the name escapes me uh, that they're calling it but um, both colors look fantastic uh, I'd probably go the blue gray one but um, there'll be plenty of people that'll just see that danger fruit and have to have it so um, awesome to see pivot coming out with all these new colors um, they're getting away from their they're just regular blue and black and stuff um, so yeah either way I think the, the bikes in person look great and uh, you can't go wrong. Frame wise, the bike is extremely lightweight. Um, so climbs fantastic, um, nice and stiff and uh, pivots obviously move to the trunnion mount shock on all of their bikes uh, as they update them. So it has a really sh um, like short standover height, uh, I believe from 4.10 to 6.3. You'll be able to stand over the bike and makes it a lot more um, agile as well for smaller riders. Uh, and obviously, has the um, the pivot dock tool capable uh, under the top tube and under the BB as well, um, so you can slot that in. I always use it. I have it on my um, Trail 429 and my Switchblade, and um, makes it super easy just to flip that thing out pull the tool out and um, make adjustments on the fly. Um, you know, super silent and you don't even notice it's there. So great little details on the bike. Um, it's got the, you know, the, the internal cable routing as well that Pivot does, which um, for me has never been an issue. You either just pull the, pull the tension tight or like push it in and um, tighten off those grommets at each end and you're good to go, no no uh, rattling inside the frame, um, which is great. And when you do have to reroute new cables and things, then it's super easy to do. Um, you're not feeding it down through different channels and trying to find your way through the frame. So um, great details there from Pivot. Whew, it is hot. It's like 80 degrees in the middle of winter. Wasn't really ready for this. 
this early. Well, made our way up to the top of Eliminator Trail, which is running super nasty at the moment. It's so shaly and loose. It's like old man emptied all of its rocks over here onto Eliminator. It's so bad. But um, it's an exciting day because today is mullet day. That's right, business at the front, party at the back. This is the switch cat. Switch cat? Or the shadow blade? I don't know, you choose. But um, I'm not entirely sure this is an approved wheel configuration. Um, I think I'll beg for forgiveness later. Uh, but I also feel like it'd be the number one question asked on this video is, can it be a mullet bike? Um, so we're doing it. That's it, the wheel's on there. And we're gonna see how she goes. Conditions are horrendous on this. <laughs> that is loose and steep. I'll tell you that much. Man, break levers are. been around mountain bikes for the last few years you would you're no stranger to a 160 mil 27.5 bike i'm sure all of us were on that bike um you know up until a couple of years ago uh where everything changed so for me i felt right at home on the bike um no big surprises for me there and as i've mentioned in this video uh, a few years ago i was on a very similar bike to this um same size wheels um same travel and I felt like I was riding probably the best I've ever ridden on that bike. Uh, super comfortable on it, and it just fits like my size. So, you know, medium to smaller riders and female riders, um, I think they'll find uh, a massive benefit in riding a 27.5 wheel, uh, where they feel a bit cumbersome on a 29 inch wheel uh, in those tight situations. That trail is treacherous, I tell you what. It's a, it's a steep one, it's a nasty one, there's high consequences uh, at the best of times and in, in its current condition, it is damn treacherous. So I'm happy to get down the bikes in one piece, no damage done, so it actually ran pretty nicely down there. Um, coming into the steep sections, I instantly realized that my levers were a little too far out and I was really reaching for them, but um, we managed to get down without too much arm pump and did it safely. The bike felt great, to be honest. Plenty of traction on the front with that big wheel. And the rear wheel just, I think, allowed me just to slap it into some corners and just wash some speed in that shaley uh, loose rock. So um, no issues there. Um, didn't buzz my butt on the really steep chute there. 
Um, so yeah, it ran pretty good. One thing I seriously love about Pivot Bikes is the attention to detail they put into these machines. Um, you can tell that everything is just quality. They don't compromise on anything. Um, I think Pivot is just like, we wanna do the best bikes possible, not compromise. Um, you know, other brands can dive down into that, but we wanna be a premium product. And every time I get my hands on a new Pivot, that's all I think of. If you see a Pivot on the trail, you know it's like a high-end bike. Um, and you know, just the, the details in every little bolt on the bike, um, you know, the cable management, everything just works fantastic. You know that it's all really well thought out. So, you know, I really love that about their bikes and uh, the Shadow Cat is um, no exception to that. So there you have it. That's my take on the new Pivot Shadow Cat. Drop a comment below. Let me know if you think 27.5 is dead or if it's alive and well. Uh, let me know in the comments and give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.